Hello, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Uh, today is going to be a very chill practice. Um, a little bit of undulation of the spine going from flexion and extension. So maybe a little bit of back bends, but totally choice base. Feel free to do as much or as little as you want. Um, the playlist today is Common Ground Grounded 10. Hitting play in five, four, three, two, one. And then today to start making your way down into child's pose or shell stretch. As you make your way down into this humbling shape. Today, I encourage you um, perhaps to surrender. Maybe that's surrendering to your higher self or a higher power. In yoga, there's a niyama called Ishvara Pranidhana. And Ishvara Prani, Pranidhana means that surrender to a higher source. giving up what we think we should be happening for us or to us and being present to what is happening. Surrender to what is, let go of what was and have faith in what will be. So again, if you are just joining us, making your way down into your child's pose or shell stretch. Slowing your breath down, being present here. Notice the connections your body is making with the ground. When you're ready, take a big, gentle breath in. And then exhale, let it go. And feel free to stay in the shape, or if you want, you could walk your hands over to one side. Stretching through the side of your body. And back through center over towards the other side. And then back up through center. Gather your knees underneath you and start to find some movement of your spine. So maybe that looks like cat cow or a little more freestyle. Nice and slow, know that there's no rush, that your work can wait. Any communi communications with other people can wait. This is your time to fill up your cup, be present here. And as we move through our practice, there will be a few gentle back bends. So we'll find a restorative way of firing up the backline muscles on our body. So lower yourself all the way down onto your stomach. And then reach both hands forward. Come on to tented fingertips. And start first by keeping your upper body where it is. Push your toenails down into the ground and engage your quads so you feel your kneecaps lift. And then from here, think about stretching out further back, maybe lifting one leg up and then maybe the other, maybe one at a time. And try to keep pushing your pubic bone down into the ground. 
maybe fluttering your legs like this for swimmers. Lower yourself down, stack palm on palm, rest your forehead down, give your hips a little bit of a shake. And in a similar variation, but something a little bit different, reach your hands out, reach your arms up, your feet up, take a big breath in. And as you exhale, bring your arms back behind, lift your chest up more. Same thing can be done with your toes down. Inhale, reach your arms forward, bring your chest up. And then exhale, sweep them back, drawing your palms closer together. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Again, option toes lifted or lowered. Inhale, exhale. Two more, inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale, exhale. And then bring your palm on palm, rest your forehead down. This time, bend your knees. Your feet are up towards the ceiling. And then windshield wiper your knees side to side. Tuck your toes, push back into that shell stretch or child's pose. And then bring yourself on up, gather your knees, tuck your toes and push back into your down dog, inverted V shape. Also option to stay in a tabletop or child's pose today. We're coming back from the long weekend. So sometimes you don't want to rush. Pedaling out your heels, stretching through the backs of your legs. And then walking meditation, nice and slow. Walk your feet up towards your hands. Give your low back a little bit of room to breathe. So walk your feet out a little bit wider and then perhaps grab opposite elbows. Crown of your head is reaching towards the ground. Gentle sway side to side. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Fingertips down on the ground. Heel toe your feet a little closer together. Inhale, hands on your shins flat back. And as you exhale, bring your hands to the back of your calves, forward fold. Two more times, inhale, hands on the front of your shins. Exhale, forward fold. One more, inhale. And exhale. Keep your hands on your body as you slowly ragdoll up to standing. Go for a count of five, four, three, two, one. Roll your shoulders back and down. Bring your hands onto your low back. Draw your elbows closer together. Soft bend in your knees. And then lifting up your chest, gaze goes up. A very baby, baby back bend here. Try and draw your elbows a little closer together. And then as you exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Shift the weight into your left foot. Step your right foot back down and long. Lower your right knee. And then come up, bring your hands down by your side. From here, draw your shoulders up towards your ears and then roll them back and down. Maybe doing this a couple of times. You can also do one shoulder at a time. And then allow your shoulders to be heavy. Imagine as if there is rain coming down from the top of your head onto your neck, your shoulders trickling down your fingertips. And 
from here, interlace your fingers, flip them up towards the ceiling. And then maybe you want to bend generously into your front knee. Gaze can be straight ahead or looking up towards your hand. And come back up, keep your fingers interlaced. Finding a twist, right elbow goes over top of your left knee. And so what you're doing here in your twist is you're still trying to stack your arms so they're in one straight line. I wore big hoops today, that was a bad idea. I'm just gonna take those off. <laughs> Good. So in your twist, think about the twist first coming from your stomach, then your chest. Okay, come back to your center. Clasp your hands at your low back and then stretch them down. Again, maybe you bend a little bit more into your front leg. Opening through the chest here, breathe into the very top of your collarbone. Release your hands, start to straighten out through your front leg, a very, very soft half splits. Oh. Maybe your chin goes in towards your chest. You could find stillness or movement. Bend back into your front knee, fingertips down at the top of your mat. Tuck your back toes, lift the back knee, and then shorten your stance. So think about your feet are both facing straight ahead, but a little bit more parallel, not in one straight line. Ever so slightly draw your left hip back, right hip forward. Take a big breath in. And then exhale, fold over your front leg. Saying hello to that left hamstring. And then taking this static movement, we're gonna make it a little more dynamic. So step your right foot back down long again, flossing your hips, bending deeply into your front knee. And then as you exhale, curl and round. Five cycles of breath on your own, finding however form you want to take. Going for it. And once you feel complete, fingertips at the top of your mat, shift the weight into your left foot, step your right foot up to meet the left. Again, bring your feet wider apart. Any variation you want with your hands, you can grab opposite elbows, clasp at your low back, stretching them up and away. <laughs> Sorry, don't mind my cat, Freckle. <laughs> You'll toe your feet a little closer together. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Shift the weight into your right foot. Step your left foot back down and long. Lower your left knee and then coming on up. Arms are heavy down by your sides. Imagine as if you have weight in your hands. So your shoulders will naturally soften down a little bit. Ah, gaze is soft straight ahead. Or if you want, you can close your eyes. Picturing that water gently cascading down your head, over your shoulders to your fingertips. And then again, if you want, you could clasp your hands at your low back, switch which thumb is on top. 
and then maybe start to stretch out your hands down, bending a little more into that front knee. Notice your breath. And could you allow yourself to surrender to gravity? Release your hands, interlace them in front of your heart, and again, opposite thumb on top. Flip your palms up, arms reach up. So as much as this is a soft back bend, I want you to still think about finding that engagement through your lower abdominals. So if you feel like your rib cage is flaring out and popping out, ever so slightly drawing it in. Hands together, heart center, keep them clasped. Take a big breath in. And then exhale, find your twist, left elbow over your right knee. Twist from your stomach, then your chest. Come back through center, half splits. Ooh. Again, stillness or movement, your choice. And back into your front knee, fingertips at the top of your mat. Lift your back knee, step it up three or four inches, feet are parallel. Take a big breath in, lift up your chest, and then exhale, fold over your front leg. Pyramid pose. Again, letting go of what was being present to what is. And having faith in what will be. And bend a little bit more into your front knee. Step your left foot back down in long, flossing your hips. Bending deeply, letting your hips sink. And as you exhale, shifting your hips up, straightening out through that front leg. Moving with your breath here. Next time you bend deeply into your front knee, stepping your left foot up to the right. And then heel, heel toe, your feet are about two fist width distance apart, which will be about hip width distance. Take your peace fingers, and then hook them around your big toes. Take a big breath in, reach the crown of your head forward. And as you exhale forward fold, bring your elbows out wide. Again, chin is in towards your chest. The crown of your head is what's reaching down towards the ground. Careful not to sacrifice this by bringing it into your shoulders. Still keep your shoulders drawing back and down, an energetic pull here. Inhale, halfway lift. Again, exhale, fold. Keep that hook on your big toe. This time when you inhale, halfway lift. Slide your palms face up under your feet. Trying to bring your toes maybe to touch your wrists. And then play around with rocking your weight forward and back. We're bending deeply into your legs and then straightening them out. Ooh. Careful not to lock your knees. You wanna keep that blood flowing through your legs to your head. And then release your fingertips. Ooh. Step back into your down dog.
Inhale, come forward into your high plank. Lower your knees, your chest, your chin. Untuck your toes. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower. Slide your forearms out in front of you. So they're gonna be the trick that I find works really well. So you bring your hands down. You can bring your middle fingers to touch your elbows and then bring them back down. It's about shoulder width distance apart. And then once you make your way down, maybe bring your elbows a little bit further, but imagine them tracking towards your pelvis. So it's like you're drawing your elbows back, but they're not really moving. And you might notice a slight pelvic curl here. Engage into your lower abs. This will help protect your low back. And then so from here, this might be enough. Otherwise, if you want, you could start to lift your arms up into a very gentle back bend. Actually, this isn't gentle. This is pretty, this is pretty intense back bend. So if at any point in time you notice that low back starts to hurt or you're dumping into it, either again, tuck your pelvis or lower yourself back down onto your forearms. Close your eyes, coming into the shape. Three, four, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower yourself back down. Plant your palms under your shoulders. Tuck your toes. Push back through child's pose to your down dog. Shift the weight into your left leg, reach your right leg high, and then roll open your hips, stacking a knee. And then stay where you are, take three really big circles here with that knee. Ooh. Changing directions. And then square your hips, draw your knee in towards you. And then plant your foot over to the left side. Now listen carefully, come onto the outer arch of your right foot. So this is called awkward pigeon. And just like what we were doing before with flossing our hips, finding the same movement here. So bending deeply into your front knee, like you're about to go into pigeon and then psych, setting your hips back up. And if this is too much today, you could also find a very similar variation by lowering your back knee. Move with your breath for three more cycles. And the next time you bend deeply into your knee, coming into your pigeon. And if pigeon isn't available for you today, I'd recommend coming into 90-90. Front leg is parallel, back leg is also 90 degrees. And then folding over your front leg. And if you opted for pigeon, untuck your back toes and then peek behind. Notice if your foot is going really far to one side or the other. Try and see if you can bring your foot in line with your heel. Might feel nice to sway your hips a little bit side to side before you settle in. Ooh. And then if you want, you could lower yourself down onto your forearms. Notice if you're coming up against any resistance that might be in your body, it might be in your thoughts or feelings. I know that surrender isn't necessarily giving up. Maybe it's accepting what is or being present to what is and sitting with it or beside it.
If you're down on your forearms, bringing yourself back up onto your hands. Tuck your back toes and then push back either into a down dog or three leg down dog. Up to you for what you need in your body right now. If wild thing is in your practice, you could also flip into that. Reaching your right arm either up overhead or towards the top of your mat. And coming back through, meeting in down dog. Shift the weight into your right foot to lift your left leg high. Stacking your hips, three leg down dog. And then the options there if you want to take those big hip circles. <laughs> Changing directions. Oof. And then drawing your knee in towards your chest, bringing your left foot over towards the right onto the outer ankle or outer arch, not the outer ankle. And then flossing your hips forward and back. Whew. Always the option to lower your back knee. And then next time you bend into your front knee, lowering your shin down, coming into your pigeon or your 90-90, giving your hips a little sway side to side. And then take a peek at that back ankle. And then your choice, you can stay lifted or lower down onto your forearms. <sighs> Perhaps softly closing your eyes, letting your gaze go inwards. Tucking your back toes, coming back up onto your forearms, pushing back either into your down dog, your three leg down dog, or wild thing if you want. And then coming back through to your down dog, and then lower your knees, coming into one final back bend. So I'd recommend doubling up your mat underneath your knees, even if you're on carpet, just to give you a little extra support. And then coming up here, so your hips are parallel with your knees. It's up to you, your toes can be tucked or untucked. You know how there's always like one pose that you absolutely hate, which means you probably should do more of it. This, this is this pose for me, so this is camel. Um, and camel can look so many different ways. Bring your hands onto your low back. Your fingertips are turned down towards your bum. Roll your shoulders back and down, and then perhaps your gaze goes up. That might be enough for a back bend here today. Or if you want, you could think about arcing like you're going over a beach ball, arcing like a rainbow. So your chest is still lifting up as you find your back bend. And then think about still pushing your hips forward, engaging through your quads, squeeze your glutes. And maybe, maybe one hand comes onto your heel, maybe the other one, you'll start to lean back, but then again, push your hips forward. If you're in the full expression of camel, you can also let your head go because your traps will protect your neck. Most important part, remember to breathe. And feel that opening through the front of your neck. Ooh. 
And when you're ready, one hand back on your low back. For the other, bringing yourself on up. Untuck your toes. Ooh. Come on towards your heels. Soft child's pose or turtle, where your knees come closer in. Create more space for your low back. So anytime you go into a big back bend like that, you want to spend the same amount of time, if not more, in your counter pose in a forward fold. So there's no rush here. We're going to take our time. And pushing down into your hands, bringing yourself back on up. If your mat's still folded, unfolding it. Ah, and then slide your legs out in front of you. So move the flesh away from your sitting bones. Bend your knees as much as you need to. You're going to take those peace fingers and hook them around your big toes again. So from here, you're going to have a really generous bend in your knees. I want you to think about when we go into a halfway lift, how you're lengthening out through your spine. So you're not quite like turtling with your neck leading, the crown of your head, trying to flatten out your back as much as you can. And then to stay here, maybe you start to slowly stretch out your legs as much or as little as they will go. And then from here, what will start to happen is your pinky toes are gonna to wanna to curl in as your big toes push out. So instead, try and flatten your feet as if you're pushing your feet against a wall. Lead with your heart as you forward fold. Ooh, you might not get as far as you normally do, and that's okay. Bring yourself back on up, let go of your peace finger grip. Bring your bum closer towards your heels, slowly lower yourself down. Knees bent, if you have the space, open your arms up nice and wide. Shift your hips over towards the left. And maybe your left leg wraps around the right for eagle legs. Maybe your knees are stacked or staggered. Allowing everything to tip over to the right. And this left arm, it might start to come off. Your shoulder might start to come off the ground. That's okay. I know that if you make your way into a shape and it feels really tight and sticky, shift around, adjust. And just because you adjust one time doesn't mean it can only be one time. You can continue to adjust and shift and move your body until the shape suits you. Again, I encourage you to close your eyes. Let everything go. Surrender to whatever you need to surrender to right now. Maybe you want to take a gentle breath in and out. Use your next inhale to bring yourself back on up through center. Shift your hips over towards the right. Maybe that right leg wraps across, maybe it doesn't. 
And then your knees fall over to the left. Take a big, gentle breath in and out. Knees back through center, shift your hips underneath you. Ooh, windshield wiper your legs side to side. And if there's any other final shapes you want to take, maybe it's an inversion, maybe it's stretching your arms and legs up towards the sky. Your hands reaching for the outside of your feet, bringing your knees wide. I need any shapes or movements that you need. And then when it feels right for you, coming into your final pose of rest. Today we'll be here for about four minutes to take any shifts or adjustments that you need to feel comfortable in your body and your space. Coming back to Ishvara Pranidhana, surrender to a higher source. Surrender to what is, let go of what was. Have faith in what will be.
when you're ready, starting to deepen your breath. Oh. Please feel free to stay where you are. Otherwise, mindfully making your way on up to seated where we will all meet. Whether lying down or seated, bringing your hands in any shape that represents any practice. And closing out with one final breath. So when you're ready, take a big breath in. And out. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your day, carving this space that's just for you. And I hope that you leave here feeling maybe a little bit more at ease or relaxed to know that you don't have to always take on the weight of the world you don't until you have to fight everything sometimes you can just surrender and let it be whatever it is thank you so much everyone enjoy the rest of your day